Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we got a show here for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. So, as you guys know, yesterday was the NBA Finals, Game 1, and uh, I was pretty, pretty interested to see this matchup, right? It's not the matchup I'm sure the majority of us had. Maybe some people had the Denver Nuggets going to the finals, but I certainly did not have them playing against, uh, what is it, the Miami Heat. So I was definitely dialed in to see how that game would unfold, right? And as I was watching the game, the Miami Heat seemed to be playing the Denver Nuggets pretty close. But one of the strengths the Miami Heat had during their playoff run was their ability to play the zone. And uh, teams like the Boston Celtics would bail them out because those guys would not figure out a way to attack the zone and they would just sit up there, keep trying to swing the ball to keep c consistently putting uh, shooting threes. But in the case of the Denver Nuggets, they have, they have the best big man in terms of passing in the NBA. So if you put him in the middle of the floor, he was going to eat you to pieces. And that's exactly what happened. I believe in the first half of that game, Nikola Jokic, I'm just looking at the numbers here. I believe Nikola Jokic, let me just pull him up right here, finished the first half with 10 assists. 10 assists in just the first half of that game. He was literally hitting all of his shooters um, in their pockets, and he was basically making all the right reads. That was the first thing. The second thing I noticed about that game was the Denver Nuggets were taking advantage of their size. If you notice, early in that game, they kept on posting Aaron Gordon. And Aaron Gordon kept on screaming, too small, too small, too small. Essentially playing very, very smart basketball. Which then reminded me of the Boston Celtics, who played some of the most head-scratching, low-IQ basketball I have seen in a very, very long time in the Eastern Conference Finals. And as I was combing through the internet, I came across... A clip here of Charles Barkley, who was at the game. And I got this clip via, what is it, House of Highlights? And Charles Barkley, they were asking him to kind of give his analysis on that game at the end of the game. And when it came time, when it came time for Charles Barkley to kind of weigh in on this, uh, the, the, you know, game one, he actually just decided, you know what, I'm going to take an opportunity to just take another shot at the Boston Celtics, who played just some of the dumbest basketball one could see a team play. Uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals. So what we want to do is we want to play what Charles Barkley had to say here, and then we're going to come back and react to this game. So take a listen to what Charles had to say there. And 46 points overall in the paint, but early on you said attacking. And the thing on that clip that Shaq showed us, the guys were all moving, cutting, moving without the basketball because they know that Jokic will find them. He's dominating the game in the first half with those passes that Shaq talked about and not scoring. Yeah. And that's the danger of him. He can beat you with the, you know, with scoring, but really dangerous there with the pass and setting the tone early. Aaron Gordon take a little bit of a throwback where you find the mismatch and you attack. You mean actually play smart basketball? <laughs> Something like that. You know, it's, What's so, that? Yeah. it's so easy to play in today's NBA game, but two things really bother me. Uh, number one, these guys are so impatient. They never try to take advantage of these, the mismatch. They just jack up threes. And the second thing is, these guards, they say, if you're a great guard and they had to put one of these big guys on you, you should score every single time. If you're an elite guard, a center or a big guy should not be able to guard you. Right. But these guys are so impatient today. And I love Shaq's pictures because and Grant said, it's old school. I'm like, I didn't realize it was old school when they put a little ass dude on a big old dude. <laughs> that, that's just good basketball. Yes, it is. Seems more like remedial school to me. Like yeah, a yeah, bad yeah. idea, right? We used to scream, uh, and it's so funny, we can't say what we used to say. Uh, but now we say, mouse in the house, mouse in the house. And then everybody <laughs> knows, oh, where's the mismatch at? We, we'd be screaming, people like, I have my fans coming to me, man, why do y'all scream mouse all the time? Dude, when you put a little guy on a big guy, that's what it's like. So you heard what Charles Barkley had to say uh, there in that um, in that clip. Now, prior to game one of the NBA Finals, this was something I actually complained about bitterly on this channel where we produced the show that was centered on some comments that the late, great Kobe Bryant had to make of, of the current state of affairs of the NBA. 
and the way the game is being played. And in Kobe's estimation, he believes that the game is being deteriorated um, from, a, from, a, from, a, from a youth level, that players are not being taught the game the right way. And I think that analytics has just kind of hijacked the NBA to the point where now teams are just no longer able to think the game anymore. They're playing the game like as if they're trying to run some type of formula. And they're playing some, some teams are playing some very stupid basketball, number one. Number two, teams seem to not understand, seem seem to not be able to understand that in most cases, they're not going to have the personnel of a Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors really popularized that style of playing basketball, and they won with it because they have two of the greatest shooters of all time. Most teams don't. Mike D'Antoni and the Houston Rockets try to implement that strategy, never worked. And since the NBA is a copycat league, a lot of teams are going to try to mirror or mimic some of the things that the current champion is doing. I remember this when the Lakers were winning back-to-back titles. And at that time, conventional wisdom stated that you needed to have two seven-footers on the floor, right? It's one of the reasons you saw the Boston Celtics. They had that as well with Kevin Garnett and Kendrick Perkins. You saw the Los Angeles Lakers with Andrew Bynum when he was healthy and Paul Gasol. They had a very, very big big front line and as a matter of fact some were saying that their front line would be too long or whatever it is their 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 big men would be too long or too big so they actually had to move lamar odom to the bench because you would basically they, they were saying that you would have too much size you would have paul gasol andrew bynum and lamar odom who i believe is six foot ten right so it's a copycat league and now the thing is the new fad is okay let's shoot a lot of threes and it was so refreshing to see the denver nuggets play smart basketball right playing to their size playing to their strengths something else charles barkley mentioned taking advantage taking advantage of matchups or mismatch mismatches on the floor this is just smart 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 basketball right and it's one of the reasons a lot of people get, get you know get upset with the you know a, a player the, the current mvp like a joel mb joel mb is a seven foot guy shooting jump shots and a lot of people like you're taking pressure off the defense by doing that, by taking jump shots, by shooting threes. They want you to do that because you can't punish them in the paint. You can't get the other team into foul trouble. You don't draw double teams from the perimeter playing that style of basketball, right? So to me, I think Charles Barkley was 100% on the money. I think that the Denver Nuggets are a very smart team. I think they have some very, very smart players. They have probably the most devastating one-two punch in the entire, uh, what is it, in the entire playoffs right now with Jamal Murray. Uh, and Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic is, at this point looks like basketball is. It looks like the game is so slow to him. It doesn't look like they could, you know, teams could do what they did to him in the Orlando bubble where they could try to speed him up. He's essentially playing at his own pace right now. He's playing. He's playing at his own pace. I think in the first half he he, he barely took any shots, and in the second half he decided to go on a tear. And this guy finished the game with 27 points, 14 assists, 10 rebounds on 83% shooting from the free throw line, 50% shooting from the three. So even though he attempted, yeah, he, he made 50% of the threes, he didn't take too many, he only took two. Um, and he shot 66.7% from the field. And you had players that played pretty well, like uh, really well, like Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr. Jamal Murray was fantastic, sensational as always. He shot 50% from the field. Bruce Brown, he was also a great uh, great contributor. Uh, and um, KCP also played, played well. In the case of the Miami Heat, they didn't really have a solid game. Jimmy Butler... Jimmy Butler, in my estimation, was um, passive. And I like Jimmy Butler, but there's one thing about Jimmy Butler's game I don't like. Jimmy Butler overpasses. Jimmy Butler overpasses. Jimmy Butler will have a wide open layup. He won't take it. He'll have a mid-range pull-up jump shot. He won't take it. Always like to make that extra pass. And obviously, it's going to be very hard to explain to somebody like that to play a different style because he can just look you in the face and say, who the hell are you? The way I play is the reason why we're in the NBA Finals. So who am I to say or who are you to say, how I should play. I'm just giving you guys my my thoughts from afar that in my personal view, I think Jimmy passes a little bit too much, right? He overpasses the ball, but it's only game one. I think I think uh, we have more games that we're going to see, but I think Charles Barkley was 100% on the money, and I think the Denver Nuggets are showing you how a team that plays smart basketball should play. I think this should be a clinic for other teams out there to kind of pay attention to see how basketball should be played at a high level, at a three level. So these are my thoughts and opinions. What I want to know from you guys is what do you think about this show? Whatever you guys think. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section and we catch you on the next show. Peace.